welcome students to this lecture of different burning stages within a star in the last lecture i discussed the background of burning stages in a star starting with the hydrogen burning and some basic points regarding proton plus proton reaction what are the products emitted when proton and proton reacts with each other which reaction is more feasible and which reaction is not possible i also discussed neutron induced re non resonant reactions and i have emphasized the importance of constant value of reaction rate remember it was valid valid only when s wave neutrons and low energies of the neutrons are considered which is the normal case okay so as a recap i would like to highlight that neutron induced non resonant reactions were discussed in the last class then up to this i have discussed basically the nature of the nuclear reaction right nature of reaction is it smooth dependence of sigma on e or sudden increment or change of cross section of nuclear reaction on energy so it could be resonant or non resonant so after i discussed the individual nuclear reactions and their properties with some examples we need to discuss the networking of nucleides which are participating in the evolution of a star right so because there are two main goals of this course number 1 how to understand the energy produced from the stars which nuclear reactions play important role at the same time what are the nuclear reactions which are responsible for the synthesis of elements that we see in periodic table these two different goals we are trying to understand for that till now i have spent some time on the nature of nuclear reactions which are relevant for nuclear astrophysics now because one nuclear reaction is not sufficient right so when i discuss 1 plus 2 gives rise to 3 plus 4 so when 1 and 2 nuclei are reacting to produce 3 and 4 so this 1 and 2 got destroyed and this 3 and 4 got produced and again when these 3 4 3 plus 4 participates in some reaction you have 5 5 plus 6 so the nuclear reactions are taking place in large number inside the star so we need to understand the networking of this nucleides which are responsible for the evolution of a star and that is what makes different burning stages within a star hydrogen burning heat helium burning right carbon burning silicon burning s and r process and then l process right so that is how we categorized the burning stages within a star how we can understand the categorization of burning stages as i said whenever nuclei with lowest to coulomb barrier is present at a certain time they will participate in the nuclear reaction right and once they are consumed then the remaining nuclei which are produced because of the original nuclei they start undergoing gravitational contraction to a point when temperature is raised and sufficient to ignite another set of nuclei with next coulomb barrier so this is what decides the evolution of a star in terms of burning stages so we need to understand the first burning stage that is hydrogen burning stage and in today's lecture i am going to inform and i'm going to share some of the interesting points in the most fundamental nuclear reaction which is responsible for the evolution of universe that is proton plus proton reaction i hope you will enjoy today's lecture let us see the salient features of this proton plus proton reaction okay come see what i'm going to list out here in terms of questions 
what is the relation between density and temperature of a star how to answer these questions okay and which fuel release more energy per fuel consumed what is the relation with coulomb barrier and when star consumes different consume different types of fuel which type of fuel consume will be consumed more slowly and why can we try to understand with the help of some diagram and because hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe out of observed stars how many of them are burning hydrogen and what is the basis for that number though it is tentative okay and with this is it possible to calculate the age of the sun based on this fundamental nuclear reaction that is proton plus proton reaction and what is the energy loss in every nuclear reaction which is not counted as part of energy produced from the star though nothing it is this is nothing new for you i have told earlier that it is the loss because of escape of neutrinos and anti neutrinos emitted during the different types of nuclear reactions because of their extremely weak the uh, weak ability to interact with others they will escape from the star so that energy is not counted that's fine but that how much amount of energy is lost because of these neutrinos and anti neutrinos we need to come up with some numbers okay so this set of questions i hope makes you interest to know the nature of proton plus proton reaction fine let me bring back one diagram which i have shown earlier when we see the gamma peak see this is the gamma peak on the y axis in logarithmic scale right 10 to the power of minus 40 minus 30 minus 20 minus 10 and 0 so the probability versus energy if we take at a specific temperature say 3 into 10 to the power of 7 kelvin okay that is 30 mega kelvin how the gamma peak looks like for most fundamental nuclear reaction in the universe that is proton plus proton then when proton interacts with carbon 12 and alpha interacts with carbon 12 so here i have changed the projectile from proton to alpha so as i discussed earlier the gamma peak centroid shift towards the higher side because of the strong dependence on coulomb barrier okay so this establishes this figure establishes the fact that nuclei with lowest coulomb barrier starts consuming within the star and as i said the stars may experience different burning stages which can be categorized into six types and the existence of different burning stages itself is a testimony that the coulomb barrier and then the different burning stages decides the structure and evolution of a star so this should provide enough information about the importance of different burning stages the whole point i would like to highlight here is why it is important to study the different burning stages within a star because it is the burning stage which is deciding the structure and evolution of a star and the first burning stage that is which is based on hydrogen we are trying to understand fine now in a star if i consider the central temperature on x axis and the density at the center of the star on y axis okay you can see here the circles hydrogen helium carbon neon oxygen silicon burning so these circles represent the different burning stages at different temperatures of course here i have assumed the mass of the star as 25 times that of mass of the sun okay and you see this interesting number temperature is odd changing by order of 2 you see here 10 to the power of minus 1 and 10 to the power of 1 so more or less it is varying by order 2 only however the density is varying see from 0 to 8 so the density is varying by the order of 8 so these numbers are quite important when different burning stages are involved though i am not showing here s and r process because Uh, s and r process they are mainly induced by neutrons whereas these burning stages shown in this diagram 
they are dependent on the charged particle induced non resonant and resonant reactions why we have considered mass of the star as 25 times why not some other number see it has been uh, established by the researchers that a star with 25 times that of mass of the sun is proved to be uh, beneficial to understand the abundance of elements like solar system okay so that is the reason we have considered this mass of the star as 25 times that of mass of sun okay now let me start the actual part of the burning stages and here you can see that the hydrogen burning how the duration changes with the mass of the star because it is the mass of the star which decides the composition and also the probability of different burning stages is not it. So, of course, it starts with the hydrogen burning initially we can assume that because the fundamental nuclear reaction is proton plus proton depending on the original mass of the star how the duration is changing this diagrams provide interesting information ok. So, hydrogen helium carbon and oxygen burning if we see the energy production rate ok per unit gram what is the MeV energy in terms of energy I mean in terms of MeV what is the energy produced per unit mass of the fuel this gives some interesting numbers ok like 10 to the power of 24 for hydrogen 23 for helium and little bit less though it is 10 to the power of 23 order is same for carbon and much less for the oxygen. So, this is how one can feel the importance of energy production per the consumption of unit mass of the fuel per unit mass of the fuel. Now, if we see the energy can produced and the light emitted by the star from the star surface ok from the star surface light is emitted right from the star surface light is emitted which we normally detect and whose light spectra gives information about the existence of different elements right that is how I have shown that researchers have measured or discovered the technetium and some other elements as well ok. What is the relation between the energy produced and the light emitted? What might have happened in the star right because what is energy is emitted that we are not detecting it is the light emitting uh, emitted by the star surface which we are able to detect. Now, in this burning stages how to understand the relation between the energy produced in these burning stages and the light emitted by the star's surface from the outside. Coming to the hydrogen and helium, almost all energy emitted is converted into the light ok. And for remaining things because of the loss due to neutrinos and antineutrinos, the probability is more for remaining nuclear reactions, uh, the loss is more and this loss increases with increase in the temperature ok. Now, if we take the duration of silicon burning you see it is just one day it is just one day silicon burning you see this one. So, this silicon burning if you see the duration is just one day and whereas, hydrogen burning the duration you see it is about you know 10 to the power of uh, 6 to 10 to the power of uh, 10 to the power of 7 to 10 to the power of 10 depending on the mass of the star. So, one can see the large difference in the duration of burning stage within one day silicon burning is over whereas, initially the hydrogen burning is taking place for billions of years why so different why there is so much difference and keeping this in mind can we answer the question how many percent of the observed stars are burning hydrogen because when things are happening so quickly like silicon burning it is not possible to even identify them it is very difficult ok. So, one can say that almost 90 percent of the stars are burning hydrogen ok and though remaining stars are not burn burning hydrogen in terms of energy production they may not be important, but in terms of synthesis of elements with mass number ranging from 16 to 64 they are important the remaining nuclear reactions though they are not important for energy production they are important in terms of 
energy production that is advanced burning stages all right i mean before iron peak i'm talking about okay so let us move forward now as i said beyond iron peak it is not the energy production which is very important it is the synthesis of elements and which are happening because of the capture of the neutrons and in the last class i have discussed what are the reactions which are important for the production of neutrons and how the velocity distribution is take place and the reaction rate depends on the velocity of the neutron one by v law okay now let us see some more important features of the hydrogen burning see it was clear that fusion of four protons leads to the production of helium 4 okay and this process is called as hydrogen burning and the q value of this reaction is 26.731 mev so you can take the mass excess of the uh, values and find out the q value and then you can see that it is the q value of the p plus p reaction i mean the fusion of four protons which is producing four helium is 26.731 fusion of four protons is giving rise to helium 4 because initially when all are protons when all are protons how many protons are required to produce second element that is helium 4 so it is quite easy to assume that four protons have to be involved now what about the simultaneous interaction of these four protons is it possible because simultaneous interaction of all these four protons leading to production of helium 4 initially it seems like possible i mean helium 4 can be produced but the probability cannot be given as the reason for the observed abundance of the helium 4 so if it is not a single step then what what is the other way if it is not single step okay it could be two step process so if it is two step process what could be the sequence is it like this proton plus proton giving rise to helium 2 okay isn't it or proton plus uh, proton and then proton plus proton giving rise to 3 lithium or something like that what are the elements produced because of some other particles are also involved here see the reaction p plus p giving rise to helium 2 or lithium 3 producing some other positrons electrons or neutrinos they are not sufficient to show that they are responsible for the production of helium 4 because highly unstable elements are involved highly unstable elements are involved that is when the major thought process come up came up because of the thought that it is basically p plus p initially it is given uh, giving rise to deuterium plus positron plus neutrino okay of course we will see more features of this p plus p reaction okay and the production of helium 4 which is the second abundant highest abundant element in the universe it happens due to proton plus proton chain where four protons are involved to produce four helium at the same time four protons are also used to produce cno cycle i mean they are involved in cno cycle for the production of same helium 4 so production of helium 4 is because of both pp chain i mean what are the reactions involved in this pp chain i will discuss and it can also be due to cno cycle carbon nitrogen oxygen cycle that also will lead to the production of helium 4 okay and this pp chain happens in the stars when temperatures are in the range of 8 to about 55 mega kelvins for example in the sun's interior we have 15 mega kelvins and proton plus proton happens mainly through the weak interaction only not through the nuclear or electromagnetic interaction because as i written here helium 2 and lithium 3 whatever they are produced they are highly unstable okay they are highly unstable so it is not possible to assume that helium 4 could have been produced because of production of helium 2 and lithium 3 so it is mainly through weak interaction and this is the fundamental reaction p plus p is deuterium positron and neutrino the q value of this p plus p reaction is 1.45 mev please note that it includes annihilation energy of the positron annihilation energy of the positron that is 1.02 mev 511 kv plus 511 kv right and what is the kinetic energy shared by positron and neutrino right what is the kinetic energy shared by the 
positron neutrino it is simply q value minus 2 m naught c square that is 0 0.42 mev and remaining 1.02 mev goes into the annihilation energy right now one more reaction could be possible right when proton and proton are undergoing fusion it can take up one electron like capture and give same deuterium and neutrino right here also it is a deuterium same deuterium and same neutrino right and the q value is same 1.44 mev but remember the cross section is lower by four orders of magnitude when compared to p plus p reaction so this has no significant role in the hydrogen burning okay though the interesting point in this reaction which is called as proton electron proton reaction pep reaction this emits mono energetic neutrinos that is 1.44 mev this might be interesting for the detection of neutrinos from the sun because already the detection of neutrinos is quite challenging and if the energy is different it is much challenging task if we have a mono energetic neutrinos things can be planned maybe in a better way when compared to the detection of poly energetic neutrinos but further you need to know the source of this mono energetic neutrinos and that is pep reaction of course which has no ro significant role in the production of uh, helium 4 as part of hydrogen burning okay now this mathematics of a fermi golden rule i will not discuss but i want to say that the density of states the density of states for positron and neutrino when proton plus proton d plus positron plus neutrino when they are emitted what is the energy distribution of this and uh, neutrino okay so this looks like this the density of states if you go for the energy and the density of states the details i am not sharing here but one interesting thing i want to show here, here is that the density of states for positron and for neutrino okay the maximum energy is 0.42 mev the energy okay the energy is 0.42 mev and the calculation i have shown this is nothing but q minus 2 m naught c square and the maximum energy this is for the neutrinos and this is for the positron okay so this would be either for the positron or this could be for energy of the neutrinos so the average energy of the neutrino if you see it is about 0.263 mev and the average energy of the average energy of the positron is less than this one and this value will be useful in uh, calculation that we'll discuss very soon so this diagram basically shows that the distribution of energy among positron and neutrino takes place which can be understood from the density of states available for the positron and neutrino and mathematically one can know more by the, with the help of fermi's golden rule which is not the topic of this course for the sake of information i would like to give this diagram okay but please remember this 0.263 mev the average energy of the neutrino why because we need to understand the loss of energy from the stars and the loss of energy is taking place because of the escape of the neutrinos and the anti neutrinos right so when you do the calculation of energy produced from the stars and if you want to know the energy loss you need to know the number of number regarding the energy of neutrinos so that is where this diagram is useful okay i hope it is clear to you anyway if we find out the cross section of this proton plus proton reaction theoretically okay at 1 mev say then the cross section is of the order of 10 to the power of minus 47 you see such a big number earlier also i have tried to emphasize the importance of this reaction and why it is not possible to measure experimentally the cross section is of the order of 10 to the power of minus 47 even if you use the maximum current available for the protons and the energy of the proton is say 1 mev okay now if i take the 1 milliampere kind of current for the protons and if i take thick hydrogen targate where per centimeter square you have 10 to the power of 23 atoms then you see one interaction will happen in 10 to the power of 6 years if one interaction is happening in 10 to the power of 6 years how the present generation when we do the experiment will observe this and even in 10 to the power of 6 years if you get one interaction when you have thousands of events so that you can measure the cross section so that is the reason it is almost impossible to find out the of, of course it is impossible to measure the cross section of p plus p reaction 
with the available facilities. Maybe in future, if the technology is developed with a high current and better targets and better data acquisition system and extremely low background, things may change in future. But right now, there is no hope. Okay? And earlier we have seen that this proton plus proton, both are charged particles, so they follow non-resonant mechanism, non-resonant mechanism. And if you see the extrapolated S factor diagram at zero energy, it is about minus 22 kilo electron volt bond. Okay? And based on this, if you try to understand the reaction rate, P, P, this denotes reaction rate corresponding to proton plus proton reaction. Assuming the standard value of 15 mega kelvins, that is interior of the sun, the reaction rate is of the order of minus 43. Earlier I have shown you sigma is of the order of 10 to the power of minus 47 if one MeV proton is involved, right? So, the reaction rate if you see per second per centimeter cube it is only minus 43. Now, see some more values regarding the lifetime. If the mass fraction of hydrogen and helium is given as 0 0.5 and say density is 100, the mean lifetime can be calculated by using the 1 by number density of proton which can be found out from the mass fraction. Okay, from mass fraction you can find out the NH and the reaction rate already I have told you minus 43. It appears like 10 to the power of 10 years. Mean lifetime of the P plus re P reaction is 10 to the power of 10 years. That means one age of the oldest known stars. This is the reason stars consume their nuclear fuel very slowly in terms of hydrogen as fuel. So, I hope you got the answer for one of the questions with which I have started this lecture. Okay? Now, once a deuterium is produced, next reaction is proton plus deuterium gives rise to helium 3 and then gamma. And again, when this helium 3 is produced, it reacts with helium 3 produced in another reaction to give rise to helium 4. So, this is called as PP1 chain, where overall 4 protons are involved. Please consider this proton, 2 protons emitted in the reaction. Okay? And they P plus D and helium 3, helium 3 they do not proceed through weak interaction, but they proceed through electromagnetic and nuclear interactions, of course, which are uh, larger, I mean, which are faster than the original reaction. So, because they are faster compared to the P plus P reaction, overall, the reaction rate is governed by P plus P reaction only, P plus P reaction only. All right? So, now let me do the calculation of age of sun based on these calculations. Okay? Now, you see the conversion of 4 protons into helium 4 overall involves emission of 2 positrons and 2 neutrons, neutrinos. Please recollect what I have said regarding the average energy of the neutrino. It is about 0.263 MeV. Right? So, because 2 neutrinos are emitted in the overall 4 protons conversion into helium 4, the total energy loss because of the 2 neutrinos is 526 keV. All right? So, the energy produced in fusion of 4 protons whose Q value is 226.73 minus 0.53 MeV. So, basically 0.5 to 6 I have rounded to 0.53. So, 26.2 MeV is the effective energy produced in the fusion of 4 protons, fusion of 4 protons. Fine. Now, we know that the luminosity of the sun if you consider the surface, it is about 10 to the power of 39 MeV per second. So, based on this, we can calculate the number of processes taking place per second because we know the luminosity that is energy emitted per unit time and what is the energy emitted in one set of fusion of 4 protons that comes out to be around 10 to the power of 38 fusion processes per second. This leads to and once you know the 10 to the power of 38 processes are taking place. In each process, 4 protons are involved and we know the mass of each proton. If you calculate, we can see that 616 million tons of protons is converted to helium every second. How much? What is the mass of proton converted to helium 4 at the center of the sun in every second? It is about 616 million tons. Okay? Now, if we consider the mass of the sun 10 to the power of 30 kg, what is the upper limit on the lifetime? Because now we, our aim is to find out the age of the sun. So, considering the mass of the sun, 
what is the upper limit on lifetime? So, this can give us the value that 10 to the power of 11 years assuming the uniform processing rate of hydrogen. Okay? In the previous slide, I have shown you that uh, age of the that duration of the P plus P reaction. Right? However, the actual burning takes place in the interior and it does not involve 100 percent of hydrogen, but only 10 percent. So, take a, take out the 10 percent of from 10 to the power of 11. So, the lifetime is 10 to the power of 11, 10 years and the present age of the sun is observed to be 10 to the power of 9 years, 4.5 to the power of 9 years. So, we can say that sun is of middle, many middle aged stars. Okay? So, to summarize in today's lecture, I have tried to provide some information on the different burning stages, their durations and salient features of proton plus proton reaction, what could be the possibility for the next reaction and to produce hydrogen uh, helium 4 from hydrogen, what are the reactions involved and some numbers regarding the energy produced which can give us an idea about the age of the sun. More points about the P plus P reaction, how temperature decides the reaction rate and some more features in the next lecture. Okay? See you very soon. Thank you very much.